Hey everybody, it's Lissa. Welcome back to my pet channel. So I am very sorry about the lighting. I'm filming on kind of a rainy day, so I have this really crappy light over here that's like just bringing all the light over here. But I wanted you guys to be able to see the guinea pigs in the background. So <laughs> this video is going to be super long because I spent all day today since like nine this morning writing a guinea pig care guide. It is 12 pages long. I tried to put down all of the stuff that I know and the stuff that I found from other places together in one care guide for you guys if any of you are interested in getting guinea pigs. So everything you need to know, hopefully I didn't forget anything, is going to be in this video and I will also have a link for my care guide down below in case you want to find it and print it out so you have it on hand. So yeah, the link for that will be down below. Okay, I, I'm sorry. I had to move it to where there was better lighting because I can't stand that like weird shading stuff. I apologize and you're gonna also have to see this big mess in the background because Christmas came and went and now I am currently cleaning all of my Christmas stuff so please apologize for that. I promise my room normally doesn't have all that stuff over there so. Yeah like I said I have a 12 page care guide and if you see me looking down it's just because I'm looking at the care guide because I don't want to forget anything. So like I said this is all of the stuff I tried to remember to put on here so if there's anything I forgot feel free to let me know down below so I can add it to the care guide. I spent hours upon hours of just typing stuff that I know from having guinea pigs and from what I've learned and everything like that. So hopefully this will have enough information for anybody who wants to get guinea pigs. First thing I want to say is that guinea pigs are not starter animals. They are listed in pet stores and by certain people that they are great starter pets for kids and I can completely disagree with that. I am an adult. I live on my own. I have my own money and the guinea pigs are hard to take care of. So unless you're really willing to put in a lot of time, patience, cleaning, and money, I don't recommend getting a guinea pig, especially for a kid. So I just wanted to say that firsthand is that I don't think guinea pigs are starter pets. So before you get guinea pigs or even think about starting to get them, you need to make sure that you have enough room for them, you have enough time, you have enough patience, and you have enough money. Those are the four things, I think that was four, that I recommend making sure that you have because if you don't have any of those things, then guinea pigs are probably are not the pet for you. I don't know if you've noticed, but I have been saying pigs because you need to have at least two guinea pigs because guinea pigs are herd animals, which means they are happiest when they are with other guinea pigs. If a guinea pig is alone, they typically get depressed and they can even die from being alone, especially if you as a human can't spend as much time with them as possible. And and I've seen some people use the excuse, well, I'll be taking care of him all day, I'll give him attention. You can't give enough attention to that guinea pig that another guinea pig can give. The other guinea pigs will be with him all the time. I know you can't be with him all the time. I don't recommend ever just getting one guinea pig. If that's your only option, then I wouldn't even get one at all. Guinea pigs are happiest when there's two of them. The only time I've seen somebody not have more than two is because of aggression. There are some guinea pigs that are so aggressive towards other pigs that they can't be housed with other ones. That is very rare and I still recommend if you have an aggressive guinea pig to get a cage that they can still see each other. So if you have two guinea pigs in one enclosure and then the aggressive one in another, just block it off in the middle where they can still see each other but they can't physically fight because even though that one guinea pig is super aggressive, they still like to be able to see other pigs and know that there's other pigs around. So that's an instance where I've seen people do that with their aggressive pigs. Another thing that I want to point out is that you need to make sure that you're not allergic before getting a guinea pig. I've never really seen anybody say much about this, but I am on a couple of guinea pig groups and I obviously have a pet channel and I've gotten a lot of comments and I've seen a lot of posts of people not realizing that they're allergic to guinea pigs. I'm sorry if you can hear them screaming in the background. They don't realize that they're allergic to guinea pigs until after they get them and they break out in hives and they start breaking out. They can't breathe and you need to make sure you're not allergic before you get them. I myself knew I wasn't allergic because I worked for an exotic vet, so I handled guinea pigs a lot. But if you don't have any type of opportunities like that, go to the pet store, um, pet them, play with them for a little bit, see if you are if you go home and if you have any issues, which I mean, interacting with them once probably won't cause as much issues, but if you're very allergic, it definitely will. If you have any friends or family or anybody around you that you know that have any, go over to their house, play with them, see if you're allergic. Nine times out of 10, people that are allergic to guinea pigs are actually allergic to the hay and the dust with the hay. So keep that in mind as well. Guinea pigs need hay to live and if you're allergic to the hay that will cause a lot of issues for you. So keep that in mind. You may be allergic and you don't even know. Make sure that you have an ex 
exotic vet near you before you even think about getting guinea pigs because guinea pigs are susceptible to ear mites, skin infections, ear infections I see a lot. I've seen a lot of ringworm, stuff like that, parasites, diarrhea. Guinea pigs have that a lot and when I worked for a vet that's a lot of the things that we saw guinea pigs for so you need to make sure you have a vet that can see your pigs because things like ear infections can be deadly for guinea pigs and they could die within a couple days. So there should be no exception to this rule. You need to make sure you have a vet near you or you shouldn't get one at all because there's no point of getting an animal if you don't take care of it like it should be. Another thing is temp. Um, guinea pigs are happiest between like 65 to 75 degrees so make sure they're not in a room that is super hot like near a heater or they're in direct sunlight where they get super hot because guinea pigs can't sweat so they can't regulate their temperature and they could die of a heat stroke if they're in a heat like that. So uh, make sure that they're in a nice controlled temperature area if they're in an outside enclosure like a hutch. If they're outside in some type of hutch it would be kind of hard to keep temperatures regulated so I don't typically recommend that. Um, if you have some type of shed outside that you keep all your guinea pigs in make sure that you have some type of air conditioning or heating unit or something inside of it for when it's winter and summer so everything stays regulated. So now I'm going to get into cages. So I am going to be doing a whole buying guide. If you guys are interested in a buying guide for guinea pigs then definitely let me know. I want to do a video on everything you need to buy before getting them. This video kind of talks about all of that as well but let me know if you want to see that other video. So first of all for cages um, don't even bother getting a pet store cage. They're usually way too small and they're also way too much money for how small they are. You'll be saving your money getting a different type of cage. So if you're at a pet store don't even bother getting a pet store cage because it's not going to be big enough. Okay so I'm going to read this from my laptop because I don't want to mess it up. So according to the RSPCA one guinea pig needs at least 7.5 square feet minimum and that's the minimum size. They recommend bigger than that but that's the minimum which is about 30 inches by 36 inches but if you have two guinea pigs which you at least need in my opinion you need at least a minimum of 10.5 square feet which is about 30 inches by 50 inches. So keep in mind you need at least 10 and a half square feet for two guinea pigs and that's the minimum in my opinion. I feel like the bigger the better if you have more space then do that. And they need an open cage. They don't need a glass cage or like a plastic tube cage like hamsters typically are in, like a plastic bin cage or anything like that. They need a cage that's open that can be ventilated. The reason is is because guinea pigs poop and pee a lot and if you have a cage that is enclosed it'll just keep building up ammonia and it can kill your guinea pigs. So. I don't recommend anything that is not open. So there are certain cages that I do recommend using. Personally, I use a CNC cage, which is a grid and core plast cage that I built myself. And a lot of people do that. It's the cheapest alternative I've seen. Basically, you buy these grid units on online. I've only seen them online. I've never actually seen them in any type of store. And you can zip tie them together. I recommend zip tying because it makes it a lot more secure. And you can make as big of an enclosure as you want with the CNC cages. Um, the recommended grid size for two guinea pigs with a CNC is a two by four and I recommend going bigger than that. A two by four still seems a little small for two guinea pigs in my opinion so I personally have a three by five enclosure and eventually I do want to make it a lot bigger than it is. There is a website it's called guineapigcagestore.com. I'll leave a link for it down below. It has pre-made CNC cages that you can buy if you're interested in that. It is a lot more expensive than just going on Amazon and finding grid but if you have a hard time making stuff for yourself and you just want to get something that's already pre-made, that website has it already pre-made. All you have to do is build it once you get it. And it has really cute like little colors and stuff that you can buy. So that's really a good idea. It is pretty expensive though. Another cage that I've seen a lot of people use are the Midwest Guinea Habitats. They are good. Um, I've seen a lot of people use them. I recommend attaching two together. That would definitely be enough for two guinea pigs. And they do have a plus size. They have a regular and a plus size. So I I recommend getting the plus size or putting two of them together. I'll try to put a picture on the screen so you guys can see what that would look like. A lot of people tend to use those and I don't see a problem with them because they also have a lid that can protect your guinea pigs from like cats or dogs or anything like that. So I think attaching two of them together would be awesome for two guinea pigs. And then you can also just DIY your own cage. I've seen most people, especially on the Facebook pages, just make their own cage out of like wood, just make a floor enclosure. There's some guinea pigs that have a whole room to themselves and people just put like a big 
big tarp on the ground and put bedding over the tarp to protect your carpet or your flooring. And then they'll use like big wood panels to protect their walls and their guinea pigs just have like this really big wooden enclosure. There's so many different types of enclosures you can make. I just recommend making sure your enclosure has more width than height. Guinea pigs don't climb. They're not climbing animals. They don't like ramps. They don't like going up a bunch of different stories. They don't care for that. They care for width. They want to run around. They want to popcorn. They want to have fun. They don't want to like walk up all of these different things. They're not like hamsters. They're not like rats. They don't climb. So I recommend if you're going to get a big cage to get one that's more wide than high because height wise you're not doing much for them. One thing that I saw the other day and if I can find it I will put it in on the screen. I saw um, a person on the Facebook page take two single critter nations and instead of stacking them high like with a rat enclosure you put them side by side and you hook them together so the guinea pigs have like one big critter nation enclosure that can roll around. It has doors so your guinea pig is protected. You can open the doors for them. There's storage underneath and I thought it looked really awesome. So if you guys have like critter nations that's one idea. That would be kind of expensive but if you want something that's sturdy that has doors and you can roll it that would be a good alternative as well. Of course, there's a lot of different cage options, but those are just the ones that I see the most and that I like. Make sure that the sides of the enclosure are tall enough where your guinea pigs cannot jump out of them because guinea pigs can actually jump higher than you probably think. And also make sure that the cubes and the grids are small enough so they can't get their heads caught because I've seen a lot of videos of guinea pigs getting their heads caught in the grids. And there's also grids you can buy that don't even have the cubes and they're just like plastic grids. You could always get those as well. Also make sure your cage or enclosure is away from high traffic areas. While guinea pigs do like to be around family and watching people, they also get scared very easily. So if they're like right under a TV or if they're in like a really loud area where like kids are screaming or there's like a lot of loud noises, it's probably not a good idea to put them in there because they could get scared very easily. And if you have cats or dogs or any animals that could possibly hurt or kill your guinea pigs, I recommend having an enclosure with a lid because some people are like, haha, my cats and my dogs love my guinea pigs. Well, that's good for you, but there could always be an instance like I know my cats would kill my guinea pigs. So you need to make sure that your guinea pigs are safe and they don't feel like they're going to get hurt. Now we're getting into the food section of this guide and they have, there's a lot of like controversies on like certain foods and what should be fed and blah, blah, blah. I'm just trying to give you guys an idea of what I do and what I've seen a lot of other people do. There's some people that could say that I'm completely wrong, but you know, everybody thinks they're right on the internet. So I'm just kind of giving you my advice on food. Guinea pigs eat a lot, hence the name guinea pig. They are little pigs. They eat all the time. They eat so much. Like I never expected them to eat as much as they do, but they're constantly eating. So keep in mind that a majority of your money will be spent on food. I spend about $25 to $30 a week just on veggies, like fruits and veggies. And then keep in mind, you have to pay for the hay as well, the pellets, which are kind of expensive. So keep in mind that those costs all add up and you need to make sure you have that consistent money. So guinea pigs need an unlimited amount of hay every single day. There's no exception to this. Guinea pigs will always need hay. I have a big hay bin like this that I've seen a lot of other people use that I put their hay in. It keeps the mess away. It keeps the smell a little bit contained because hay can kind of smell sometimes. So I keep all of my hay in a bin like this. So I recommend getting like a $5 bin. So if guinea pigs are a certain age, they need different types of stuff. So if a guinea pig is six months and younger, so if they're little babies, then they need Timothy hay and alfalfa hay. They don't necessarily need the alfalfa hay, but alfalfa helps give them more nutrients and calcium that they would need. And it also puts on a little bit more weight. So while they're growing, it helps them put on more weight. So I'm gonna read this from my little guide so I don't mess it up, but hay is absolutely vital to the digestive system of your guinea pig. It helps prevent obesity, dental disease, diarrhea, and boredom. And hay is also necessary because it grinds down their teeth. If their teeth aren't grinded, then they become overlapped, they can't eat, and they could possibly die. Guinea pigs' teeth are constantly growing all the time. They never stop growing. So they need something that they can chew on all day to keep their teeth grinded. So if your guinea pig is six months and older, they do not need the alfalfa hay. They just need Timothy hay and if you want to change up the variety, there's also different types of hay. I personally mix alfalfa hay and this orchard grass hay right here. 
And orchard grass hay is really good for people who are allergic to guinea pigs. I've seen a lot of people talk about them being allergic and then switching over to orchard grass really helps with their allergies because there's less dust. So you could always try some of that. But the Timothy hay is the best because it grinds down their teeth the best. But I mix those two together since my guinea pigs are older than six months old. So the next thing you are going to need is pellets. So there are some people that do like pelletless diets for their guinea pigs, but I personally do pellet diets as well. So these are the Oxbow ones. I keep them in this little container because it's easier, but here is the bag. This is for adult guinea pigs. These are just the pellets. There's also the ones for baby guinea pigs. So under six months old, they need the alfalfa pellets. And over six months old, they need the adult guinea pig pellets. So they need one eighth cup of pellets a day. He sees me holding the, the thing. And that's about two tablespoons a day. And I just have a little tablespoon in here and I scoop two of them into their bowl every single day. And this helps just balance their diet a little bit better. If you're not giving them as much calcium as maybe that one day that they need, this helps balance out their entire diet. Guinea pigs need to have more than just pellets for their diet, but it doesn't hurt to have pellets plus veggies, plus hay, everything like that. Then you're giving them more than they need. Try not to give them more than the eighth cup of pellets a day because it can make them obese because they will just continue to eat it. <laughs> I'm gonna give this to them. <laughs> There's also different types of treats that you can try with your guinea pigs, and I'll get into that with the fruit section as well. But you can buy little things like pea flakes. My guinea pigs actually don't even eat the pea flakes, but yeah, a lot of guinea pigs love pea flakes. So if you're interested in that, those are some types of treats you can get. There are also these Oxbow treats that are good if you give them, you know, every once in a while. I believe that they came out with a new like ingredients, which is not as good for your guinea pigs. So I bought these before the ingredients changed. So I'm not too sure about that now. So I would just stick to fruits and veggies as snacks and maybe some pea flakes. So now let's get started with fruits and veggies. They need these every single day. Well, the veggies at least. They don't need fruit every day. Um, they need at least a half to a cup of veggies a day. That's not maybe, that's not, okay, I'll do it once a week. No, they need them every single day. You need to make sure that you have a veggie that gives them enough vitamin C because, because guinea pigs cannot store vitamin C. So they require some type of supplementation of vitamin C. And when I first became an owner, as many of you guys saw in my vlog, I bought one of those like vitamin C supplements, not really knowing much about that. You don't really need those little supplements that you put in their food or water. All you need to do is give them a little piece of bell pepper a day. Bell pepper gives them the vitamin C that they need and it's good for them. So make sure that you have some type of vitamin C food. I just give them a piece of bell pepper a day. That's enough vitamin C for them. So just keep in mind vitamin C is needed because it's required for making collagen and collagen is required for maintaining blood vessel integrity formation of bone and wound healing. So they will have strong bones if they have vitamin C basically. So there are lists that you can get for what you can feed and what you can't feed every single day. Just look that up on Google. Um, veggies that can be fed to guinea pigs every day and you'll find tons of lists that you can find. There's also an app called like My Guinea Pig or something like that. I'll put it on the screen that has lists of what you can feed your guinea pigs and it's a really good app. So some veggies that can be fed are lettuce such as red leaf, romaine, and green leaf. Never feed iceberg lettuce. It literally is just nothing but water. It has no nutrition for them at all. Raspberry leaves are really good. My SD card literally just got full because I'm talking so much, but anyway. <laughs> I have some raspberry leaves right here. They really enjoy this. So there's little like herbs and stuff you can give them as well, like chamomile, dandelion, and stuff like that. Then zucchini, bell peppers, of course. It doesn't matter which color you give. Red, orange, and yellow tend to have more sugar than green bell pepper. It just depends. If you give green bell pepper, you can just give a little bit more because it has less sugar. Cucumber, tomatoes, carrots, squash, those are all really good ones as well. And there are tons more that you can give. So if there's a food that you have that you don't know you can give, literally just Google it and you will get answers. So fruits can be given to guinea pigs as well, but I recommend only giving, giving them as like treats or giving them like two to three times a week, depending on what they are. So some good fruits are bananas, strawberries, apples, watermelon, blueberries, 
raspberries. Avoid feeding foods high in starch like peas, beans, corn, nuts, cakes, cookies, cereals, grains, and bread. So those are just some types. There are a lot of food that you can't feed guinea pigs, but those are just the basic ones. Um, these can cause serious, potentially fatal imbalance of the normal bacteria found in the guinea pig's GI tract so they could kill them. And of course, guinea pigs also need unlimited supply of water. I recommend water bottles. They stay a lot cleaner. I've tried water bowls before and they literally just flick their poop in there and it's disgusting. So they're gonna have better fresh water if you use a water bottle. <laughs> so that's all of the food stuff I can think of. I, hopefully I'm not missing anything, but that's the basics of their diet. Now let's get into bedding. So this is also kind of controversial for some people because people think that certain beddings are better than other beddings and it's all just personal preference in my opinion. There are some beddings that aren't good for the upper respiratory system. So just keep in mind when you're researching to choose the best for their respiratory system. So bedding is necessary because it absorbs the moisture from urine and feces, which can cause ammonia, which when ammonia builds up, it can make your guinea pigs sick. Just keep in mind that bedding is necessary. You don't need to keep them on like wired. Like if you just keep them on this wire, then they're gonna get bumblefoot, their feet are gonna get infected, and they could also die from it because it they can't walk. So. so here are some beddings that I've seen other people use that I'm just going to mention. So there's paper bedding such as Carefresh. I personally don't like Carefresh that much. I used it for my hamsters and I use it for my rats for like their little dig box. And personally, I don't think it absorbs as much pee as other beddings. Fleece bedding is what I see a lot of people use and that is personally what I use myself. I use Guinea Dad liners and I also use fleece. They're the cheapest in my opinion. You could buy $2 fleece at Walmart. Guinea Dad's a little bit more expensive, but you can wash them over and over again and they have absorbent layers in them. I'm not sponsored by Guinea Dad. I have been before, but not in this video. Um, this is what their things look like and they also have pockets so your guinea pigs can hide under them like a little bed. But they have like three absorbent layers in them and you just wash them and this is basically all that I use and my pigs love it. You can get kiln dried aspen bedding, paper pellets, wood shavings, hemp bedding. I've seen a lot of people use towels and bath mats because bath mats are cheap and they absorb because they're made for water. So bath mats are a good alternative. And I've also seen people just use hay, which is fine as well. So there's others out there. You just gotta research what would be the best for you. So now we're into what should I get for my enclosure? How many things, what should be in my enclosure? So that'll be um, better for a buying guide as well. But here are some things that I put on the list. So make sure if you have two guinea pigs that you have two of everything, especially with male guinea pigs because they can be very territorial and they could start fighting each other over only having one bowl. So I'm looking down at my list, but you need hides, beds, canopies, toys, um, like a litter box, hay area. It's really hard to litter train guinea pigs, but I have a bunch of hay in this just big litter box that they stand in so they're pooping and eating at the same time. I don't recommend hay racks because usually they don't give them as much hay as they need because they get stuck and guinea pigs can also get their heads stuck in racks. They need water bottles, food bowls, boxes. Um, I have these like guinea dad boxes that just came with the guinea dad liners. Um, be careful right now though because of COVID, there are some companies that are cleaning their boxes with um, a cleaner that can kill your animals. I've seen a lot of animals being killed lately because they're giving their pets these boxes. So just keep that in mind. As you can see, my pigs have chewed the crap out of these cardboard boxes and they love hiding and eating underneath them. You can buy little tubes, um, make sure the tubes are big and they can like run through them. And this is optional, but I personally recommend getting an air purifier for the room if you are allergic or if you have bad migraines like I do, air purifiers help immensely. Since getting my pu air purifier, I have barely had any problems breathing in this room. I can barely smell the dust from the hay. It's great. So those are the, just some of the things I recommend um, for an enclosure. Guinea pigs love floor time. And if you have the space where they can't get into anything, Feel free to let them roam around your house. I've seen a lot of people that let their guinea pigs roam around their house for the day and then they go back in their enclosure at night. I personally have way too much stuff that they could chew and get hurt with. So I have a big playpen that I put them in that they can run around, have floor time. You could sit in there with them. It's a really great way to bond. I recommend doing this a couple times a week if you can. I do it about twice a week with them and I'll just sit in there and I'll put a blanket on me, watch TV and they'll sit with me. Feel free to do that anyways if you don't have a cat 
cat or a dog that'll mess with your guinea pig, sit and watch TV on the couch with the guinea pig in your lap, they'll normally fall asleep if they're comfortable with you. If you are having floor time outside, just make sure that you have a pin that your guinea pig cannot escape. And also make sure you're outside with your guinea pig if they're in the grass because there could be bigger animals like birds, anything else, hyenas, I don't know, <laughs> that could come and eat your guinea pig. So just be really careful with that. And they do have very fragile backs, so be careful when you are picking a guinea pig up. Make sure that you are supporting their back end so they are not flailing, their back is not bent because you could really severely hurt their back if you're not supporting them. Now let's get into cleaning because that is one of the biggest things you will be doing with guinea pigs because they poop so much. Guinea pigs poop all the time. I wasn't expecting this much poop for some reason. Like it comes out of them all the time. So if you have a fleece bedding like I have, I recommend spot cleaning like with a vacuum once to twice a day. I only do it once a day. Sometimes I do it twice if there's a lot more poop than usual, but I only clean once a day spot cleaning. I don't know where my little vacuum went, but I have a little hand vacuum that I bought. And it's a really good vacuum. I've had it since I've had them and I literally just vacuum up all the poop. Some people use like a little broom and a dustpan. Just takes more work for me to to do that so I just use a little hand vacuum I clean everything and that's that and then once a week I will completely change out their bedding and wash it so I personally have never tried any other types of bedding so I don't know how other people do it but with me I spot clean every day and then change out their bedding once a week and then I wash their bedding I do not wash their bedding in scented detergent so do not do that it can affect their respiratory systems I either clean my enclosure stuff with white vinegar and baking soda I recently got this free and clear detergent. This doesn't have any scents or dyes in it, so I've been using this and this together and it makes them super clean and they don't have a smell to them, so their guinea pigs can't be affected by the smell. It is very important to keep your enclosure clean. That's not something that you should lack on in any way because a dirty enclosure can cause your guinea pig to get sick. Now let's get into grooming a little bit. I do have long-haired guinea pigs, but it's not so long where their hair gets completely matted. If you have those like really long like Peruvian guinea pigs, then you definitely need to brush their hair often because they can cause little mats and you don't want, you know, your guinea pig to have mats in their hair. So brushing them daily or every other day if you have long-haired guinea pigs is definitely necessary. Bathing wise, um, most guinea pigs don't really need to be bathed except for a couple times a year. I haven't even bathed mine yet. But if they're really stinky or they had some type of diarrhea or they're not grooming themselves very well, then a bath would be completely fine. Just make sure it is guinea pig safe. Um, I've seen a lot of people use like Dawn dish soap, but there are safe guinea pig shampoos out there. I personally just don't know any. Guinea pigs also need their nails trimmed multiple times. Once or twice a month is good for some pigs. Some pigs nails grow faster than others. I do mine about twice a month. I use these little cat clippers. These are the best ones for me that I've noticed because they're small. They don't get in the way and you can just clip them really fast. I was a vet tech for three years so I know how to cut animals nails but I know it's kind of nerve-wracking for some people to cut your guinea pigs nails. So if you're just way too scared and you think you're gonna cut their quick, just take them to the vet and get their nails trimmed. It's usually not that expensive. But if you are cutting the nails at home, always have some type of quick stop or cornstarch nearby. So if you accidentally cut their quick and make them bleed, you have something that can stop the bleeding. Luckily, my guinea pigs nails are white. I've noticed most guinea pigs nails are white and it makes it easy. The pink part of their nail is the quick, so just don't cut the pink part. Keep in mind that guinea pigs are very loud. So if you have them in a room like where you sleep or where you eat or where you're doing important work, I wouldn't recommend having them in there with you for that because guinea pigs will scream usually if you like crinkle any type of bag, they will start screaming. Um, sometimes when I'm live streaming, they will start weaking super loud in the background and that can be distracting for some people. So just keep that in mind. They love to popcorn. They love to run around in circles and make a lot of noises. So if you can't sleep with loud noises, I wouldn't recommend putting them in your bedroom. I also I recommend keeping a schedule with them because when guinea pigs have a set schedule they are used to you that helps them bond with you in the mornings I come in say good morning to them I'll clean I'll replenish their hay if they need it and I will refill their water bottles and they're used to me doing that every single morning so they'll greet me in the mornings 
and I will sometimes be in here streaming or doing something and they're used to be being in here. And in the afternoons, I will come give them their veggies and fill their pellet bowls. And they're used to that. So when I open the door in the afternoons, they'll start weaking and screaming like crazy because they're used to me. They've gotten so used to me that I can now kiss them on the heads and I can hold them and everything like that. So set a schedule with them. If you do the same thing at the same time every single day, they will get used to that. They will get used to you and it'll help with your bonding. My number one thing is make sure you have a lot of patience. It takes patience for guinea pigs for sure because they are prey animals so they get scared very easily especially if they're not used to you so if you only have them a couple days and you're getting upset that you can't hold them or sleep with them it's because they're not used to you yet you've got to have patience I've had my guinea pigs since June and it is now December and they have just now gotten used to me where I can pet them sit with them kiss them and stuff like that it took that long so you've got to have patience they're not the types of animals animals that will immediately cuddle up to you like that that's just how it is and make sure you do your research obviously watching this video is a great first start in doing research for guinea pigs but my video is not the only research you need to do you need to do as much research as possible I researched guinea pigs for about five years before I even got them I wanted them as a kid and I never got them because I knew that I wouldn't be able to afford them until now so research 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 everything. Guinea pigs are a lot of work, but they are very worth it if you have the money and time for them. If you're an adult and you're getting guinea pigs for your kid, and make sure your kids are very gentle with them. I know some kids are not very gentle with some animals, so make sure that they're gentle. And keep in mind, if you get a guinea pig or guinea pigs for your kid, there could be a chance that your kids become uninterested in your guinea pigs and you will be the one taking care of and doing all of the work for them. So just keep that in mind. If you're getting guinea pigs for your kids, that could be something that happens happens and you need to just keep that in your head. Also, if you're a kid watching this video and you want to get guinea pigs and you're doing research, that is great. I'm very proud of you for doing a bunch of research, but make sure that just because you're getting a guinea pig doesn't mean that the work is done. Make sure that your parents are willing to pay for vet bills because vet bills are expensive. Make sure your parent is willing to drive your guinea pig to the vet if they get sick and make sure your parents are willing to pay the money for the veggies, the fruit, the hay, the decorations for the enclosure, the enclosure itself, because most of the time kids don't have that type of money. So if you are a kid, make sure that your parents are willing to do that. So now you've done all of your research and you're ready to get guinea pigs. Where do you get them? How do you get them? And where's the best place? So first of all, I recommend do not go to a pet store. Usually guinea pigs at pet stores are misgendered. So they're usually pregnant because they put boys and girls together and they're usually sick. They have upper respiratory infections. They have some type of mites, parasites, ringworm, who knows? Most of the time when you get guinea pigs from a pet store, that is what happens. And if you buy a guinea pig from a pet store, then you're just going and supporting the poor care that those animals have. So make sure that you know the gender of your guinea pig 100% before you go and get it. Because like with me, if I wouldn't have known the genders, I could have put a boy and girl in here and I would have ended up with like eight babies that I wouldn't know how to take care of and I would have to find homes for. So keep that in mind. There are pictures and videos on how to determine the sex of guinea pigs. It's really not that hard with males. You can just push in the little, you know, comes out and you can see it. So please just keep that in mind. So the great alternatives for finding guinea pigs are rescues. There are so many rescues, especially in Georgia for guinea pigs, because usually any rescue or shelter that you look at, there will be guinea pigs because they're so misunderstood and people don't understand how much care guinea pigs need. So usually you will be able to find a guinea pig at a rescue. Breeders is also a great alternative. Just make sure that they are a good breeder. They take care of their animals and they're not just breeding for money. Money. There are awesome breeders out there. Just look up guinea pig breeders in your area. I'm sure they're not too expensive and you'll be able to get guinea pigs that are the breeds that you want, that are the genders that you want, and that are always together since birth. And there's also pet finder websites. I personally found my guinea pigs on Craigslist. They were in some like random farm. So if there's some people that have guinea pigs that don't want to take care of them anymore and they put them on Craigslist, so that's an option. And also always make sure that you have extra space just in case you get guinea pigs and they end up being aggressive with each other. Make sure you have the space to build another enclosure or to separate your enclosure so they can't be with each other. And lastly, finally, the life expectancy for guinea pigs is about five to seven years, but I've seen a lot of more. And now my camera died. <laughs> So anyway, um, five to seven years is typically the lifespan for guinea pigs, but I've seen some live even longer than that, plus 10 years, 10 years plus. So 
Just keep in mind that this is maybe a 10 year commitment. So if you're 15 years old right now and you're wanting a guinea pig, you gotta think about when you're 25 and you've graduated high school and you're maybe going to college or you're getting a job or moving out, you need to make sure that you'll be able to have your pigs with you in those 10 years. So just keep that in mind. Just because you're a kid now and you can afford it with your parents and you have the room doesn't mean 10 years from now you will. So just keep that in mind. So yeah, that was my whole care guide. And like I said, I'll have the link for it down below. I may have forgotten a couple little things, but I felt like I put in the most important things that I could. My throat hurts from talking so much and I am hungry. <laughs> I forgot to mention this and when I saw the um, carrier, then I remembered to say it. Make sure you have some type of carrier or something with you. So when you go get your pigs, you have a carrier. Some people use cat carriers, which is completely fine. Just make sure you have one just in case of an emergency that you can put them fast in a carrier and you could take them with you. Okay, so now I'm done. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative at all. I don't really know if it was. Um, hopefully it wasn't all over the place and you guys could understand everything that I was telling you. Guinea pigs are amazing. They're the best. I've wanted them for so long and now that I have them, I absolutely love them. They are the sweetest. So this is not me trying to discourage you from having guinea pigs at all. I just want to be realistic with you that they take a lot of time, patience, and money. A lot of money. Um, they're the most expensive animals I have. They're more expensive than my cats and dogs, than my bearded dragon, and I spend a lot of money on bugs for my bearded dragon. So just keep that in mind. They are very expensive, especially if you have a lot of them. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them down below. Check out my other channels down below and my other social medias down below. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys! Bye.